Raymond Tisdale was that rare human being, a great athlete who had a great second act, but his life ended in tragedy. Raymond Tisdale was a three-time All-American at the University of Oklahoma and a forward on the U.S. team that won Olympic gold, a great power forward for the Indiana Pacers and Sacramento Kings. But music had been his first love. Okay, ready? You can start. And he left the NBA to become a jazz musician and also once again great. A new documentary tells the story of William and Tisdale's life and his final fight with cancer. Brian Shodorf wrote, produced, and directed the William and Tisdale story. He joins us from NPR West. Thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on so much. Help us understand the way he went back and forth between music and basketball. Oh, he grew up in a church. His father, Louis Tisdale, was a very prominent pastor in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Wayman played the bass in the church choir. And that's how he developed it. He didn't think he was going on to play in the NBA. He thought he was going to be playing the bass guitar the rest of his life. Obviously, when you're six foot nine and a high school phenom, basketball certainly takes priority. Let me get you, uh, draw you out a bit about his playing career beginning in college, because Michael Jordan, no less than Michael Jordan, says that Wayman Tisdale was one of the great college ball players of all time. Back in the early 80s, the University of Oklahoma was a football school. And as a freshman, he came in and really put Oklahoma basketball on the map. And now you're talking about a generation with guys like Patrick Ewing, Sam Perkins, Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, household names. And Wayman really at that time was superior to all of them in many aspects on the court. Of course, he also had the experience of being an Olympian playing for Bobby Knight. That's an interesting story. And any folks know Bobby Knight, they know that... They're they're mentally throwing a chair in their head. Oh, (laughs) Bobby Knight's a tough guy to play for. I was the number one scorer in the country at the time. Bobby Knight told me, I don't want you to score. I don't want you to shoot a ball. I don't want you to shoot a shot. And it's not that Bobby didn't like Wayman. I think he really saw something in Wayman that he wanted to bring out. Wayman is this guy, he's smiling. Every time he scores, whether he scores a jump shot or dunks on you, he's walking back smiling. Bobby didn't like that. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't sit too well with the great Bobby Knight. So he wanted to challenge Wayman to, to toughen up, to be better rebounder, a defensive player. But it challenged Wayman, and Wayman told me that after those Olympic Games, he found out what type of warrior he was, that he could take the the blunt of Bobby Knight's yellings and, and cursings, and he could take it and, and ultimately lead the team in rebounding and help them win a gold medal. Hmm. And, of course, it was that kind of warrior spirit, as it turns out, that he would need um, when he got into his 40s and had his, had his struggle with cancer. I want to play a, a portion from this film, if we could, where uh, Wayman Tisdale and his wife talking about the incident that uh, eventually helped him to a diagnosis. I remember like it was yesterday, I was pretty much just 2.30 in the morning going to get my wife some water. So I heard this, and I was thinking, he did not fall. After I fell down the steps, because of the leg, it just, just broke. I jumped out of the bed, and I go running. And I'm yelling Wayman, and he's yelling Regina at the same time. And when I get there, he's just sitting on the step. Get up, get up. When he goes to get up, he yells. It just seemed like somebody took a baseball bat and just boom, hard as they could. Here's a 44-year-old guy, never had any health complications, with just walking down the stairs and, and your leg snaps. It ended up being a disease called osteosarcoma bone cancer, which is a rare form of mainly childhood bone cancer. So for Wayman to get something like this, it's one in a million. Mm. And it resulted, it usually results in the amputation of a leg because they try to stop the spreading. And Mm -hmm. so when Wayman was going through this, he was down, but, and you know, obviously rounds of chemotherapy are going to take their toll on you, but his spirit 
and his relentless enthusiasm for encouragement and and trying to help others never let him get down and it, it never let him say hey this is going to beat me hey y'all ready to hang what does his music make you think about at this point because he, he, he was a distinct musical talent. This wasn't someone who was just going through the motions. He was a self, self-taught self musician. He played the bass guitar upside down, left-handed. And over the years, he, he kept practicing. And, you know, towards the end of his MBA career, he decided to get in more heavily. And he just has a beautiful sound. The DVD this film is being released in tandem with some of Wayman Tisdale's greatest hits on CD. And I'm wondering if you want to recommend a piece of music to us to play out of this interview and tell us what it means to you. You really want me to just pick one? I like them all. I, I'm looking at the disc right here. Yeah. I think that Wayman wrote this song. It's number four on the record. It's called It's All Right. And it's off his 21 Days record. Wayman sings on it, and it was actually written in 2001, written and performed. But if you listen to the words, you would think he wrote it right after he had his leg amputated. Because even back in 2001, he was expressing to people, you have to keep your head up, you're going to have some dark, lonely nights. But at the end of the day, you have to have faith, keep your head up, and it's going to be all right. At night, please don't you worry about the thing that you're going through. Yeah, sometimes it's there on purpose just to show you he can bring it through. Mm. Brian Shortoff, his new documentary, The Women Tisdale Story, is now available on DVD. Mr. Shortoff joined us from NPR West. Thanks so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's all right. It's okay. This is Weekend Edition from NPR News. I'm Scott Simon. God has said in his promise that he won't put more than we can bear. Hold your head up.